up on Fulton today. What's on the agenda for the largest county in the state of Georgia? We'll hear what the commission chairman has to say in this year's state of the county address. And the county manager takes an up-close look at Fulton's award-winning water reclamation sites. Fulton Today starts right now. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shawnya Chavis. Fulton's chairman lays out the plan for the most populous county in Georgia in his first ever state of the county address. Now, while much of the work is still to be done, the chairman says brighter days are here in Fulton County. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega was at the state of the county address and she joins us now with the story. Priscilla. The state of the county addressed emphasized one Fulton working together to be an exemplary county. And the commissioners plan to do that by focusing on five strategic areas. But along with this wonderful diversity that we have on the board of commissioners, we have found common ground. We have found a common agenda. Unified and stronger. Words that Chairman John Eves describes of the county, the Board of Commissioners, and the new the county manager. The present of Fulton County is bright because of the commission, but the future of, B of Fulton County is even brighter because of the wonderful, strong leadership that we have. The 300-plus who listened to Chairman John Eves' State of the County Address said Fulton has already seen positive changes. It's wonderful to finally see Fulton County as one county, one Fulton. And I just love um, the message that uh, Chairman Eves gave us because that's what we've all been striving for. We heard that it's not north versus south, but it's the county. And if we can get to that level and get to that, we can do nothing but make great changes for our county. The county is now working on five priorities, including safety, economic development, and health. We provide a great service to all of our citizens, but we wanted to make sure that we are focused and our priorities, and I am particularly happy that we took health as a key component. Quality of life services, including the library system and the arts, will also be a key priority, plus a more efficient government. And I think it's going to be um, much improved and enhanced of uh, how we deliver those services and the amount of people that we can reach with our services. The county also has a goal of finding $100 million worth of savings over the next 10 years. The next step is to detail a strategic plan that focuses on customer service and to spread the message of a more unified Fulton County. Reporting at the Loudermilk Center, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Meanwhile, juvenile court's newest associate judge is officially sworn in. I state your name. Tyree Nasha Turner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. State Court Judge Patsy Porter delivered the oath to Judge Renata Turner during the courthouse ceremony. The new judge vowed to work to make a difference for all children and asked the guests and the community at large to join her in that goal. So everybody raise your right hand. So I state your name. Will personally and professionally do my best and do more to uplift my community, my city, my nation, in order to improve life for all individuals, all families, and thereby all children. So help me God. As an active member in her community, Judge Turner has served as vice chair of the Fulton County Child Attorney Board and Georgia's Supreme Court Committee on Justice for Children. Judge Turner will join three presiding chief judges and three associate judges at the court. The tour of Fulton facilities continues for the county manager. The latest stop gave Dick Anderson a look at one of our environmental and emergency agencies. FGTV's Felicia Church has the story. The first stop on this day 
was the Atlanta Fulton County Emergency Management Agency. Director Matthew Kalmeyer gave County Manager Dick Anderson a tour of the department. The agency coordinates preparedness with state and local agencies and manages recovery response for all types of disasters like last year's Winter Storm Leon. That is our job always to, to maintain those relationships so uh, when we need to pick up the phone and talk to the person, they know who we are, they pick up the phone, they talk to us. Citizens can also get information on how to prepare for emergency situations in their home and on the road. As you know, uh, when anything happens in Metro Atlanta, uh, there's always the necessity to response. Anything that's of an emergency nature, whether it be weather to human event uh, related. And the good news is we're prepared uh, with the technology, Matt's leadership, his team, and maybe as importantly as anything, all the coordination with our 14 cities as well as all of the first line emergency responders, they truly function as one team. And that, you know, hopefully is never needed, but it's like anything else. If it ever is, that's exactly what we want. The county manager's weekly field trip also took him to the Department of Public Works in Roswell. He talked with staff at the Big Creek Water Reclamation Facility. That plant services a 70-mile area, stretching from Roswell into portions of Milton, DeKalb, and Cobb counties. Mr. Anderson praised the county for his vision and the employees for their contributions. So these employees in particular really make the customer's day by doing their job in a special way, and, I, and I'm very appreciative. And by the way, I didn't just learn this here, but for everyone who doesn't know it, we're the only county that has won statewide and national recognition for our water uh, facilities. So they're not only doing a good job, they're doing the job better than anyone else. The county manager also talked about his own personal experience with one of the county's water reclamation facilities, the Johns Creek Environmental Campus. But it's the number one plant in the state of Georgia. So that's one reason I want to be here is just to congratulate all of you on a fantastic accomplishment. But there's a second reason. My house is about uh, a fourth of a mile or less from here. And I've said to many people, but I want to be able to say it to, the, to anyone watching this, that it's really a great example of when government does something exactly right. The Johns Creek Environmental Campus combines state-of-the-art wastewater treatment technology with an educational facility in a park-like setting. The plant can treat up to 15 gallons of wastewater a day. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Felicia Church. Thank you very much, Felicia. Young people who want to learn more about policy, government, and community service can now apply to be a youth commissioner. Fulton's Office of Children and Youth is recruiting high school students for the youth commissioner program. Participants will lobby the Board of Commissioners and the legislature on issues important to them and their peers. We're looking for young leaders and the program slogan is to get tomorrow's leaders involved today. And we look for young people who have an interest in public service, who perhaps inspire to be elected officials, who may be debaters in their schools, or who just simply have an interest in community development or would like to voice their opinion on youth-related issues. The Youth Commissioner Program is open to students in the 9th through 11th grades who are residents of Fulton County. Along with the application, students will also be required to submit a two-page essay on issues important to their generation. Now, if you need more information about the Youth Commissioner Program or the application process, you can contact Reginald Crossley. Students attending Fulton County Citizens University get a glimpse at one of the one-stop shop health centers for residents. The group spent week four of the 12-week course by learning about Fulton's safety net services. Class included a field trip to the Oak Hill Child, Adolescent and Family Center. The 22-acre site offers a number of services for children and families like dental and behavioral health services. There is also a teen clinic at the site and a women's infant and children's call center. This is my first time here. I am astounded at all of the services that are being provided here. What did they, I learned how the county worked together with other local municipalities such as the Fulton County School System to make sure that we have a healthy uh, population, uh, especially along, um, amongst our, our young population, our, uh, our pre-K um, children and also the young adults uh, that are um, 
approaching adult age. If approved by the Board of Commissioners, the site could also be used to mentor homeless children. And when we come back, we'll tell you how seniors are celebrating spring. It's a part of our district by district coverage next. Fulton welcomes another international delegation to the county, and it's all about urban agriculture in Fulton County. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin with Chairman John Eves as he officially greets an esteemed delegation from Ecuador Province, Democratic Republic of the Congo. The at-large commissioner hosted the group as they visited Fulton County Government Center. The delegation was led by His Excellency, Governor Sebastian Impeto Pango, and included several other dignitaries from that region. The visit was outstanding. The, uh, uh, what we spoke about with the, uh, uh, with the chairman and uh, when His Excellency was explaining what is uh, going on in DRC and how they are looking to uh, further develop the country is uh, quite exciting. We're looking forward to the possibilities. The delegation from Ecuador province is in the U.S. to discuss possible opportunities for partnerships specifically with Fulton County and in the area of technical and educational exchange programs. In District 2, seniors kick off the spring season with a luncheon and a dance. Participants at the Dorothy C. Benson Multipurpose Facility said goodbye to the cold temperatures and hello to flowers and sunshine with a warm fellowship. Well, this is my first event, and so far I'm very pleased. It looks really, really nice. I'm looking forward to the entertainment. A lot of nice people here. So it's a great thing that they, that they you know, do here. We give them companionship. We, we give them friends, and they become close friends, <clears throat> even if they come to the Benson Center not knowing anybody. By the time they've been here a short while, They've got friends. The Friends of Vincent hosted the spring luncheon and dance. The Friends groups at the county centers sponsor a variety of events to help offset the cost of programs at the facilities. District 4 Commissioner Joan Garner co-hosts a lunch and learn event to chat about what Fulton County is doing in the area of urban agriculture. The commissioner partnered with Fulton's Commission on the Environment at our Wheat Street Garden Farm. Both highlighted the work done by the Truly Living Well Center for Natural Urban Agriculture. We love Truly Living Well. It's been a partner in our community since 2008, and it's great to invite the commission and citizens to come over and take a tour and to really explore what it is to have an urban farm in the middle of uh, the city of Atlanta in Fulton County. Um, it's great um, celebrating Earth Week. You know, it should be Earth Day every day. The Lunch and Learn presentation was one of the many events held in Fulton County in recognition of Earth Day. And finally, in District 6, seniors celebrate National Dance Week at the South Fulton Arts Center. The E. Dilly Egba Dance Ensemble and the Gremlin Dancers performed at the facility as special guests. Well, today, uh, I enjoyed them, especially the African dances. And although our group is line dance, it's just a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of motion and movement and it just makes it a just draw for dance dance brings out the, the life in you I like to see people particularly at a, you get to be a certain age and they kind of count you uh, down and out but uh, that dance performance me man there <laughs> there's a lot of there, there's a lot of life in us old folks still National Dance Week is recognized all around the country and started in 1981 when a group of dance-related organizations began the grassroots movement to bring greater awareness to dance. We'll take a look at another Dance Week event later in the show. And when we come back, celebrating Older Americans Month in the county. Stay with us. One of the most popular months for senior activities is underway in Fulton County. May is Older Americans Month. And in Fulton County, where they have a large senior population, there is a lot to do. 
FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has the story. Got it wrong, got it wrong. Seniors got moving for this year's Golden Games in honor of Older Americans Month. The national theme is Get Into the Act, which is exactly what these seniors are doing. I was in the military, so I got used to exercise and things like that. And seeing all these folks out here is really terrific to see that they're keeping up with their activities. Senior centers around the county are hosting several events and showcasing the many services and resources available for seniors this month. Some of the activities will include health fairs, as well as senior art exhibitions, in addition to fitness days, and um, our annual volunteer appreciation luncheon, just to name a few. The activities assist those over 55 with living healthy, active lives. Fulton County participates in Older Americans Month because we, number one, we love our seniors. Number two, we value our seniors. And number three, we serve as the designated agency uh, for Fulton County services for, um, that fall under the Older Americans Act. The month's activities will be another opportunity to discuss good health in general. That's a subject senior centers focus on year round, but it is highlighted in May for Older Americans Month. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. In other health news, a state official addresses the rising rates of certain sexually transmitted diseases in the state. Michelle Allen with the Georgia Department of Public Health says Georgia has the most causes of infectious syphilis in the nation. She says the numbers prove the disease is highly contagious. According to county health officials, Fulton is number one in the state for syphilis. Now, according to the American Social Health Organization, one out of four teens in the U.S. gets infected with an STD each year. By the age 25, half of all sexually active young adults will get an STD. Allen says that's why it is important for people to know their status. The CDC urges us to use GYT, which is get yourself talking, get yourself tested, or if you're infected, get yourself treated. The county hosts a number of STD awareness events, including this screening site at the Atlanta Harm Reduction. HIV, syphilis, and chlamydia tests were conducted. Educational materials were also handed out to dozens of residents. Now, for more information on testing and the STD walk-in clinic, just call 404-613-1401. Next week, families can learn more about their health in a fun event. The Fulton County Health Department is partnering with Union City for a Community Health Day. The event will feature physical exams, immunizations, dental care, and chiropractic services. There will also be plenty of entertainment, food, and music. It will be an experience the whole family can enjoy. We have to also realize we have an influx of youth who probably have never had the opportunity, to be perfectly honest, to visit a dentist. So this is an opportunity for them to uh, be afforded those opportunities uh, and understand the importance of health. The Union City Community Health Day will be on May 16th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Ronald Bridges Park in Union City. For more information, call 770-964-2288. And still to come on Fulton today, an exhibit by an internationally known artist who lives right here in the county. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. The Central Library turned into an art gallery with an internationally known artist. Christopher Cole temporarily showcased his paintings and photography at the library. The exhibit called Searching for Redtown focused on his recent travels in the southeast in search of Native American's history. My kind of artwork, I don't always know what the art's going to, final product will be. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a journey, a journey into the unknown. Cole says featuring work at the Central Library is crucial because of its rich mix of cultures and corporate diversity. To check out the list of current exhibits at the library, go to AFPLS.org. And finally, Fulton's Arts and Culture Department joins the nation in celebrating the art of dance. As we mentioned earlier, during National Dance Week, dance performances of all types entertained crowds. 
we love to go out in the community and, uh, and show what we've got and give back to the community as well. This one was at the Fulton County Government Center. More than a dozen events helped celebrate the various forms of dance styles during Fulton's week-long observances. The performances also proved how dance can be fun and a part of a fitness routine. The Arts and Culture Department holds various dance classes for beginners to advance. To get more information, go to FultonArts.org. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out on Twitter and Facebook, and of course, watch us anytime on our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnya Chavis. Thank you for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.